Hi everyone and welcome to our series of producer case studies from around the northwest. We're doing these case studies with um, producers that have utilised effective strategies or have thought about different strategies during the drought to help them get through the drought and I guess uh, you know make those management decisions to to alleviate some of the challenges that the drought sort of put a across a lot of producers in Australia really. Um, and so we've got Mike Lomax from Werris Creek here and, and Mike's put in place numerous um, effective strategies across his whole enterprise but we're really focusing on confinement feeding and how he managed nutrition um, during the peak I suppose throughout the drought but during the peak times of the drought so we'll talk to, to Mike about um, I guess the strategies that he used and what provoked those decisions and also I guess what what it what it involved so we're standing in here with a confinement feeding setup that was used um, when it was when, in, during the drought it's it's certainly not like that at the moment um, but I guess in front like behind us is some um, feed trough pen uh, some feed troughs that Michael um, talk about in a minute and uh, the the size of the pen and the close proximity to um, you know facilities on the farm so welcome Mike and thank you for talking to us today um, so where are we where are we Mike we're in Werris Creek the old uh, Binaway line which is now Whitehaven's coal uh, loading line yep. is uh, to the south of us so yep. uh, uh, I'm actually the only landholder here now that uh, joins the mine. All the rest of them have sold out to the mine, and um, yeah, we're uh, we've we're good we're good neighbours. We we get on a, uh, all right together. So um, on the confinement feeding, I really picked that up from going to uh, local land services seminars um, and probably utilised this uh, arrangement here uh, for a period of a year in the last year of the drought. Um, the cattle or the cows stayed in here probably six weeks after the rain started to fall in January. I took them out in, in March once the feed started to come away. Uh, but during the period they were in here, uh, I fed them uh, cottonseed and um, hay from generally down south. Most of my hay came from South Australia and Victoria. And as we discussed previously, I figured that that was where the better quality hay came from. Uh, and I was much better off with quality rather than quantity. Yeah. And I did evaluate um, all, the, all the hay that came in. Uh, initially in the first year of the drought, it was difficult to get um, the providers of the product to provide a, uh, a feed analysis. So I got my own through... Um, uh, feed Central in uh, uh, in Queensland. Yep. Uh, tried everything in the first year um, from sorghum stubble through to rice stubble, um, corn stubble uh, and ended up basically with the oat and, oat and hay out of Victoria yep. which gave me an ME of about 11 yep. which was the really best. Really good yeah. and yeah well, before we did this we I talked to Mike and what I guess what when you like what is the importance of the energy component of feed in confinement feeding setups like you talked to me about really emphasizing meeting those megajoules of metabolizable energy for like you had um mostly you know pregnant and lactating cows so what is the importance of making sure that you're meeting that quality with the when you're feeding in confinement feeding as well as in the paddock but in confinement feeding Okay, well initially you've got to understand what the, uh, the cow is going to require during that, uh, that cycle from a dry cow full through to a full lactating cow uh, with, a, with, a uh, with a calf at foot. Yep. So you, you're moving from about 70 megajoules to 130 to yep. 140, aren't we? Yep. Uh, and you've got to adjust that feed, that ration, during that period to make sure they're getting what they want. By yep. the time you figure out that your cow is going downhill, it's going to take you yep. too long to get it to get it back, yep. and it's probably going to cost you in feed. So by knowing exactly what that feed, that ration holds in it through doing the feed testing, then you know how much yep. to, to put out. I, I weighed all the bales yep. that came in. I knew what uh, was in each bale, so I knew what I needed to put in these feeders. 
Um, the cotton seed was pretty straightforward. That yep. doesn't that doesn't change much. I just measured what went into the front end uh, loader on the yep. bucket yep. Uh, on the tractor, and um, that uh, told me what I needed to put out there. So I do uh, uh, three feeds a week. Um, three of uh, uh, it'll be two of hay and one of cotton seed one yep. week, and then two of cotton seed yep. and one of hay, based on a ration of around two kilos per day of cotton seed and five kilos yep. per day of, of hay. Yep. And that was de decided based on the megajoules that was in the, the yep. feed. You also talked to me, like you said, I guess you made the decision to destock pretty significantly to what you had and then you, you then made the decision to move into confinement feeding. So how many animals did you have and how big is this confinement feeding set up? Okay, the, initially uh, I started off into the drought with 360 breeders and uh, the second year I knew uh, that, had to, that had to change. Um, and in the third year we were down to just over 100. Um, I had uh, 60, 60 of them in this um, uh, confinement feeding area here, which is about um, two, two and a half acres, probably a yep. hectare. Yep. Uh, the feeders were probably the most expensive component here. I built four or had, had four of these feeders built. Yep. Uh, they cost me around 1500 I modified them a little bit from the original design so I could get a bale in directly over the top. Yep. Um, it could take three bales of hay and it was set up to feed 30, 30 yep. animals, 30 full cows. Yep. So 60 here over the two, um, the two feeders uh, and obviously it takes all the cotton seed, yep. it reduces wastage, mm -hmm. that was the big, big initiative and as I said the most expensive component. Yep. You can see from the fence that, that I put up, um, not a lot of money spent there, probably materials, most of the materials I had. Yep. A little bit of labour, probably four hundred dollars went yeah. into went into those. So, and I suppose you know. one of the important things, like it was a really good tool when it was dry and we were experiencing the drought. But one of the things, like I guess now, what are you using it for now, and how is it useful for your enterprise? You know, w w with this season. Well, the the plan was to use it for my for my heifers that were were calving, but I didn't want to waste waste feed again yep. by by using hay yep. in there so I basically put them on the tropicals which are right next door um, they're the, the back end of the the heifers that are calving I do have them in in the other paddock that I've got down here which is a confinement feeding area and it's yep. also the area that I took my uh, weaners off early and weaned into yep. there and different feed components in uh, in there uh, but it could be used uh, and possibly will be used in the future for isolating um, uh, heifers yep. at, at calving yep. is, is probably the best thing I see for it uh, and possibly uh, weaning yep. into it as well. And yeah. so, I, and as a strategy too, it saved, you, you said to me, it saved labour because you had it so close to facilities. That, so can you talk about that? Th that's correct. Uh, you know, I... I took on board the components that local land services pointed out. Uh, it's well drained, uh, it's got a shaded area, it had a trough already uh, in, the, uh, in the paddock once I, once I put the wire up, uh, so it was very easy to adapt the, the um, uh, landscape that I had and the uh, infrastructure that I had. So uh, yeah, and it, it definitely has, yeah. has worked very well for me yeah. during the back end of the drought. So if you could put a lesson into a sentence, what was your biggest lesson that you learnt or took away from, you know, utilising confinement feeding? All right, well, uh, you know, in, my, in one of my last lives that uh, in a different industry, I learnt that you can't uh, manage what you don't measure. Yeah. So uh, that's where I kicked off here is measuring my feed component and yep. making sure I understood what was in that feed component and then what the cow needed um, during that lactation cycle particularly. So it's, it's really measuring uh, on the front end the feed component that goes in and knowing uh, what the cow needs uh, yeah. to get through a pregnancy and uh, put a calf on the ground yeah. for me. And I wean uh, at eight months normally, yeah. but during the drought it came back to fall. So, yeah, 
Yeah, so early yeah. weaning is another strategy that a lot yeah. of people used during the drought. And it still has its economical benefits now. But I guess there's a difference between early, early weaning and just, you know, early weaning. But that was something else that you talked about too. Like that was an, a strategy that you implemented with early weaning to ensure that you weren't diminishing the condition of your cows during that time. So, um yeah, I thought I hope that you've taken some taken some lessons away from us talking to Mike today, and we really thank you for allowing us to do this with you because it's really good to be able to share these messages to other producers across the region. So thanks for that, Mike. Okay, thanks, Kate. <laughs>